So today I would love to share with you how I have been growing citrus in containers for almost 10 years now. I have had a lot of questions about my favorite tree, which is a Kaffir lime tree. And then I also have other trees such as a Meyer lemon tree and a Kalamondon. And so we'll start by taking a closer look at the differences of the trees in case you want to grow one too. We'll look at grafted tree versus a seed grown tree, how to plant one from seed, how to care for it such as watering, feeding, fertilizing, and pruning. And then I'll show you some of the problems that I've had in case you have some problems too. And then we'll look at harvesting them, which is always the fun part. And then of course, how we're going to use them in the kitchen. I'll give you a lot of ideas. So let's go ahead and look at how to plant the tree. So for the purposes of this video, I will mostly focus on my Kaffir lime tree. Now you can grow one from seed or one that has already been grafted to an established citrus rootstock and those are typically what you will purchase at the nursery. If you buy an established tree from a nursery and you plan to grow it in a container, it is best to choose a dwarf variety if it is available. This will make it a lot easier to take care of it, especially if you live in an area where you'll have to be bringing it indoors during the cold seasons. So just to give you an idea, this is my Kaffir lime tree when I first bought it. You can see how tiny it is. This is actually a grafted tree. And so this was in June of 2009, and I'll just show you how it's kind of grown over the years. Since I was new to growing citrus in containers, I didn't recognize a problem that I had on the tree until a viewer helped me out. I did a video on it and asked for help. And so this was it in 2011. It had almost lost all of its leaves, and I'll show you why when we get to the problem section of the video. So this is it in 2013. It showed some great signs of recovering from its problem and really started to produce limes at this time. And then here it is today, very full. And I think here in 2017, I harvested almost 100 limes off of this tree. Now you can also grow a Kaffir lime tree from seed. Of course, this will take quite a bit longer to get limes, but the great thing about a Kaffir lime tree is that we use the leaves a lot as an herb for cooking. So this is my tree that I grew from seed. I started the seed in June of 2013. And this was it three years later. And I live in a pretty cold area, so mine grew slower. If you live somewhere that is warm and you can leave it outside a lot longer where it can get more warmth and light, you can probably expect for your tree to grow much quicker. So let's take a look at how you can grow one from seed. And I actually had limes produced by my tree, so I have been using seeds from my fruit. Now you can buy some seeds online. I think I've seen them on eBay and places like that, um, Amazon. So if you just take a look around, you should be able to get some seeds. So in order for me to get a seed from my fruit, I sliced it down the middle off center because I did not want to cut the seed which is in the center and then my fruit does not produce a lot of seeds though I have read that Kaffir lime fruit normally has a lot of seeds so I'm not sure why mine doesn't have a lot but I usually get one maybe two seeds from each fruit and so I just get them right out of there and I'll dry them on a little screen until I can get them started now you don't have to dry them first and I'll just soak them in warm water until they're nice and soft on the outside. And then you'll just want to pull out this little side of the seed. It looks like a little string and this will help it germinate. Now it should germinate faster by doing this rather than leaving that on there. It makes it a lot harder for the seed to sprout. So I like to do this. And then I just use the paper towel method that most of us are familiar with to get them sprouted. So I just put these on a damp paper towel and put them on a warming mat. 
because they like to have warmth to sprout. And about six days later, they started to sprout. And so what you wanna do is put the tail side down into your soil. Just make sure that you keep this moist. I use a seed starting mix and I do not reuse potting soil for seed starting. You know, I don't wanna use soil that another plant has grown in for seed starting because I like to keep it nice and clean and I don't want fungus gnats in my house. I use a nice sterile soil of cocoa coir and a little bit of vermiculite. And I'll basically just keep this misted with a little spray bottle of water until it comes up and then I just feed it a diluted solution of a water soluble fertilizer until it's warm enough to move into a container. So for me that would be in the month of May and it takes a long time for these little trees to get growing. My first year they pretty much just stay looking just like this. They don't grow much at all. I was actually kind of disappointed when I first started growing it. I didn't know what to expect. And so the following year though it really just took off and I was just very impressed with it. So don't be discouraged if the first year your little baby seedling tree is not um, growing much. For some reason, maybe it's my climate, I'm not sure, but it just kind of stayed small that first year. I did bring it indoors when we had a threat of frost because a frost will kill these trees. And so just a couple of years later, this is how it looked. It was just really doing well starting to show some side growth and there were a lot of thorns on this little tree too. The thorns are not fun. I'll just go ahead and tell you. So when the tree is at about this stage, you can begin using the leaves for cooking. Now here on my grafted tree, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like before you get fruit. This is what the blooms will look like and they smell so wonderful. They have kind of a pinkish hue to them. And if you have ever grown fruit trees before, you know some, you need to grow a couple of different varieties for cross pollination so that you will get a better harvest. However, with citrus trees most of them are self-pollinating so don't worry about that I have gotten a lot of fruit off of just one blooming tree so if you're not familiar with grafting simply put it is when you take a cutting from one plant that you want to grow and you secure it to another plant which has a healthy root system that cutting will use the plants system to grow um, this is done commonly with citrus trees that you buy at the nursery because, for example, with a kaffir lime tree, it is very frost sensitive. And in order to make it more commercially available, where more people can grow it, it is grafted to a citrus rootstock, which is very hardy. It might be more tolerant of cold weather, and so therefore it'll be a more marketable tree. And here are about four of the most common citrus rootstocks which are used for grafting. Now I have noticed quite a bit of different characteristics between my grafted tree and my tree that I've grown from seed. So just to give you a bit of reference, if you're going to grow a kaffir lime tree, I have noticed that my leaves of course they're still aromatic. Um, the leaves are very large but I've read that true kaffir lime leaves in Thailand um, are smaller so I'm not sure um, about that because I've not been to Thailand but at any rate um, my fruit produces very little seed or no seed at all where most kaffir limes I believe have a lot of seed in them. My fruit is very juicy and um, my tree has extremely small thorns or almost no thorns at all. They're pr practically non-existent, but I do believe that it had some thorns um, a few years ago. And of course, because it's grafted, as I mentioned, it is more hardy in my cold growing climate. 
Now the tree that I've grown from seed, I do notice that those small leaves seem to be more aromatic and better for cooking. Maybe it's because it's a younger tree, I'm not sure. The leaves are much smaller. My tree has not produced fruit, but as I mentioned, that a kaffir lime should be very seedy and have just be full of seeds. However, mine have not been lately. I think they were at one time, it seems like early on, they had a lot of seeds in them, but no longer. And I've read that it's low juice and very oily, um, and that they have a lot of large thorns. I can attest to that. My small tree grown from a seed is very thorny. They are very, very sharp, and it is very frost sensitive. I lost a tree actually because um, I left it out I don't think it actually dipped much below freezing and I lost the tree. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it because my large tree was fine, but those leaves turned white, they fell off, and it died. So if you grow one from seed, do know that it is very uh, frost sensitive and you really need to baby it. Now your grafted tree may have some unusual growth coming from the bottom of the tree and I'll show you what to look for. Down at the bottom of my tree, sometimes little suckers will pop out. And this is not part of the kaffir lime tree. This is part of the rootstock from another citrus. Usually in the spring, when the tree starts to grow, the suckers will just pop out of the bottom. It's just very easy to keep them under control. All you have to do is just pull them off. It won't hurt the tree. Now there are about four common trees where the rootstock is used for grafting. I think mine is called a trifoliate orange. I can't be absolutely sure because the tree uh, leaves have actually changed shape over the years. Now above the grafted line here, this is part of a kaffir lime tree. You can see that the leaves look different, but I will go ahead and remove both of them because I like for my growth to be at the top of the tree. Now right here is the graft line. So you can see where the plant stem was put onto the rootstock. So I'll just share with you some ways I've taken care of this tree over the years. And if you live somewhere warm, perhaps USDA zone nine or higher, maybe even eight B, um, you might be able to plant this in your yard and it does fine, especially if it's a grafted tree. Um, I feel most comfortable leaving mine in a container and just bringing it indoors during the cold seasons. And some citrus can be grown outdoors all year long in zone seven and higher. I remember growing up in Georgia and we had a neighbor who had an orange tree. I had a neighbor who had a lime tree. It's always nice to have some fresh citrus around. So when it's indoors in the winter, I like to put it in front of a sunny window. The area where I put it is east and southeast facing. And typically what I'll do with my trees, this is my kaffir lime tree. I'll just top dress the soil with some very well blended compost. I like to use a lot of different types of compost. I do the same thing with my dwarf Meyer lemon tree here and my calamondin. I don't usually see new growth on it until I have fed them good and they've moved outside to enjoy the summer. And so this is what new growth looks like. And these leaves are really nice for cooking too. Um, because some of the older leaves can be a little bit tougher and they're not as aromatic. But these young leaves like this, they're nice and tender and they're just really, really good. After they've been fed, they'll also start to show little buds. So they'll eventually produce their fruit. The type of container that you use is very important. I grew this tree in a container which had a large saucer on the bottom for many years until the container actually just cracked and fell apart. And so I always fed it from the bottom and it would take up the water as it needed it. I found it's best not to overwater a citrus tree. Um, maybe when it's fruiting, give it a little bit more water, but try to, if you can, water from the bottom. And the container is also very important. This was my container that had cracked and my son helped me move it into another container. I couldn't find one similar to what I had been growing it in. I wish I could have, 
but um, I did find one on sale. You just want to make sure the bottom of your container has very good drainage holes. This is the bottom of the container that it had been in for many years. And you can see the size of these holes. This is a great container and it's raised in the middle so that the roots and the tree are not just sitting there in the water. And it was just a really good container. I wish I could find another one like it. The tree has done okay in the new container, but uh, I'm just really picky about the kind of containers that I use. I also went ahead and moved out the tree that I grew from seed and I put that in a new container. You do need to make sure that you are moving the tree up and to larger containers if you want to have a large tree. If you don't want to have a large tree, keep your container size small. Now another thing you'll need to do over time is prune your tree and basically with citrus I wanted to have this tree look like a tree. I didn't want anything coming off of the trunk of the tree such as new growth. I didn't want it too tall on top. I wanted it to be kind of round and bushy but if it gets too bushy that will keep sunlight from getting into the canopy of the tree. You want the sunlight to be able to get to the leaves so that you can get fruit. So I pruned it really well a couple of years ago and I took off probably half of the tree. I took off a lot of leaves. At this time I was also experiencing a problem with insects and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So basically how I pruned my tree was that I just stood back, took a look at it, determined the shape that I wanted, and then just started trimming. And then I took a look at the canopy itself and I determined which type of branches could come out and would allow sunlight to enter into the canopy. You kind of, you want to have that sunlight hitting in there so that you will have a lot of citrus. And so the only thing I had to be really careful of because I was pruning this in the um, spring is that it had already started to form fruit, little tiny fruit. And of course I didn't want to trim those off. So um, each branch that I took out, I made sure there was not fruit growing on it too. I'm not sure if there's an official time of when you're supposed to prune your tree if you're growing it in a container. I'm sure this would be dependent on the climate that you're growing it in. I'm just sharing with you how I uh, pruned my tree. Some of the leaves had some insect damage on them and so I discarded those but the ones that were nice and healthy I went ahead and I kept those and I froze them and I'll show you how I did that in just a minute. And so this is what it looked like when I was done. Um, like I said I took off about half of the tree. This was the first time I did an intensive pruning of the tree and I was just always kind of apprehensive because I thought I might hurt my tree but it turned out great and it did real well. Now for the problems that I've had over the years. And the scale insect is a very common pest which affect citrus trees. They affect other plants as well. But of course I'm going to give you an example of what I experienced. There are basically two types of scale insects. One is called soft scale and one is called armored scale. And they basically will just stick to the tree. They look like small tiny bumps and they start sucking on your tree. And you'll notice they'll be like honey, what they call honeydew. It's like a sticky sap um, that will cause problems on your tree. Uh, if it's a terrible, terrible infestation, you could lose your tree. Um, I showed this tree to viewers many years ago and they identified it for me and I had no idea I had a problem and usually you won't know that you have a problem until it, your leaves turn yellow and they just start falling off because the scale insect really camouflages itself well especially when it's on the trunk or the branches of the tree. They're kind of easy to see on the leaves. Um, they just look like little small bumps. They can come in a variety of different colors. Mine were brown and they also can be white, yellow, uh, gray. Of course it gets harder to see them when they're gray and brown and black. I just really struggled 
with this tree for many years with the scale insects. It seems like they always got worse in the winter when I had it indoors. Oh, it was just terrible. And then that sap also causes a problem with what's called sooty mold. It's just where it tur turns your leaves black um, and it can affect the photosynthesis of your leaves of the tree. So I'll just share with you some of the ways I kept the scale insects under control over the years and then how I finally, fingers crossed, <laughs> I finally got rid of them. So initially I would just cut out any areas that looked like the infestation was really bad. I'm not sure if these scale insects live like with a symbiotic relationship with spider mites, but I would always notice that the infestation was worse where there was some webbing. And so I would always just cut that out. And then with my smaller tree particularly, I would just wipe it down with cotton balls that were soaked in an extremely diluted rubbing alcohol and just kind of rub them off. Um, one way that you can control scale insects, which I did not use, is by using a horticultural oil. And that's supposed to suffocate the scale insects. But I never used that, and I just used some other organic controls to see if they would work. Finally, when I realized nothing I was doing was working, I don't have a picture of this, but um, you can just use your imagination here. I took a piece of plastic, and I wrapped it around the bottom of the tree trunk, and I secured it with tape, made sure that I had the plastic draped all around um, the container making sure to cover the soil because I was planning on blasting this tree with an insecticide and I personally do not use synthetic or chemical uh, insecticides in my garden. I don't use them in my container garden or my square foot garden, anything like that. But I was just to the point, I was so frustrated with the scale insects over, I don't know, five or six years, I was just done. I was going to spray this tree. I was not only going to spray it, I was going to blast it good with an insecticide. <laughs> and so this is what it looked like when I was done. I mean, the leaves were already falling off anyway. It had just really went through it. So I sprayed it good and I crossed my fingers. And then I fed it with a water-soluble fertilizer to encourage some new growth. I also just, um, of course, always top-dressed it with compost. And it wasn't long before I started to notice some little tiny new growth coming out on the tree. So I was really thrilled about that. And then just a few months later, it was completely filled out. I was so impressed. And no scales, no scale insects. So I was very happy. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look here at how to harvest from this tree so that we can use it in the kitchen. And mostly you will use the leaves of this tree. That's what makes it so wonderful for cooking. And so even if you don't have fruit, you can use the leaves and get so much nice flavor infused into your soups and curries. So of course, just pull off the leaves whenever you want to. And then if you start to get some fruit, don't pull the fruit if it releases easily then go ahead and take that off. Um, I typically like to pull it off when I need it, but as I mentioned in 2017, I had about a hundred limes on here. That's more than I've ever had. And so maybe it has just been stressed out from all the scale over the years, but um, I had to go ahead and harvest a lot at one time. I think I had to get about 60 off of there. They were starting to fall off. And so I had left 30 on there and just used those over the next month or so. So this is what I ended up with that harvest off of the tree. And so now I'll show you how I use this wonderful tree in the kitchen. And of course I just snip off some leaves whenever I need them. And the older leaves are quite leathery and quite tough, okay, dry and tough. And so if you use them, pull out of that center stem. You can mince this if you intend on eating it, so it'll make it a little bit easier. So I used some of the minced leaves on a key lime pie that I made, and it really added a lot of flavor. What you see here are actually key limes with the kaffir lime leaves. Now a lot of times if I use them um, to make a stock or maybe I put them in a curry or a soup, of course I'm not going to eat these, I will just tear them 
kind of horizontally um, because I plan on removing them. I found that it's easier for me to remove them that way um, versus tearing the leaves and dropping them in the stock or the soup. And you just kind of want to break them up a little bit so that it will release more of the flavor from the leaf. And I like to use the zest of the lime to make paste, such as a red curry paste. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and put the zest directly into my soups or my curries. So with your fruit, just go ahead and use your microplane and just turn that fruit as you're grating it so that you do not get the white part in there, which is bitter. So I had so many limes this past year, I could not use them. So a lot of times I will just freeze them in a Ziploc bag so that I can grate them into uh, my dishes later. I also do this with my kaffir lime leaves. And you just wanna make sure you wash them real well first and then go ahead and dry them and just in a paper towel, make sure they're clean and free of any kind of insects. And you can just pop these right in a bag. I do like to remove some of the excess air in the Ziploc bags and that's easy to do just by almost completely closing it with the exception of putting a straw right there in the end of it and then just suck that straw and that will pull the air out and then you can go ahead and close it. You can also dry your leaves in a dehydrator. A lot of times if you try to buy kaffir lime leaves online, they are the dried version, but I think that the frozen has much more flavor. So I also wanted to go ahead and get some seeds out of the fruit. I did not want to freeze them first because I was afraid that this might ruin the seed. So I went ahead and harvested the zest of the fruit and I just put that on some parchment paper and I froze it and then put it in a Ziploc bag too so that I can use this along with my leaves. I did not use the straw to seal this because I wanted the zest to be kind of loose in there instead of all compacted together. So after I zested all of the limes, I went ahead and squeezed them good and got out the juice and any seeds that were in there. So what I have not mentioned is just how wonderful and fragrant these kaffir limes are. So while I was zesting these and I was squeezing the juice, my house just smelled so wonderful. So I removed the seeds and I just put these on a little aluminum screen. This was a splatter screen that I used for cooking and I just let those dry. And so I made sure to also save the rinds because if you just simmer these on the stove a little bit, it will also make a nice air freshener for your home. And I froze the juice that I got out of the limes. It looks a lot like key lime juice. And because it smells so good, you can use this for cleaning. Just get a little ice cube, melt it, and then I decided to make a little cleaner with it. So after I diluted it in some water and melted it, I just strained it out and put it into a little spray bottle with a couple of teaspoons of white vinegar. And the kaffir lime juice really helped kill that vinegar smell. So so it was a real nice all natural cleaner. And then I also used it in some water that I used to mop the floor, just to give a little bit more fragrance. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out my other how to grow videos, such as how to grow chilies and peppers, scallions, cilantro, lemongrass, and many more. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.